Hi, this is Kate from Isalicious Designs and today we're going to be making Aurora and it's the detachable skirt standing up Aurora. So I'm going to be using the monster tail to do her dress just because I find it quicker but we'll start by doing her body. The colours you're going to need are a blonde for her hair, skin tone for her face and hands and legs, uh, a couple of white bands for the front of her gown and I'm using a sparkly pink um, as in a, a like a glittery pink as a darker color but also the rainbow loom glitter pink which is the lighter one as well all right you're also going to need beads or bands for her eyes I'm using the two mini pony beads for her eyes and uh, you can use bands if you like but um, we'll, we'll need those too so our loom is going to be in the offset configuration which means columns one and three will be slightly lower than column two. We're going to have the arrow facing toward us or the open part of the peg facing towards us. We're going to be double banding. That means you take two bands at the same time and you place them over the peg as if they were one. And that gives your construct a uh, thicker, more robust feel to it. So we'll get started. We're starting with her hair. Some people have asked me where I've got this light yellow from and I'm actually testing some bands for a company called Lucky Loom who, um, who are brilliant. They're making an earth tone kit uh, again and the colours are going to be absolutely fantastic so I'm very excited about that. So we're on to skin tone and detangling <laughs> the bands. There we go. Still double banding. Now I do like to use three bands for the neck area just because that's quite a weak area and you don't want it to be. I'm going to use a single flesh tone band as a crossover band for her face here. I'm going to use a single one across for her eyes but I'm going to take it and twist it once, twice and three times and place the first band there. That band is going to stop the beads from sinking to the back of her head when we've loomed her because I find that really really annoying. We're going to thread our beads or your bands onto your um, flesh tone band. I use a hook to do it um, because these are a size that fit my hook but you can use a metal threader, you can use floss, whichever is your normal method. Slide these onto these two pegs here and then you're going to split that one band in two, take that top part of the band and pop it over this peg here and it almost acts as a crossover band. Okay. Next we're going to do her shoulders, they're going to be flesh tone. Try and get them so that they're not too twisted on each other. and two bands of flesh tone for her chest area and now we're going to move into our sparkly pinks we're going to drop them down our loom like normal <laughs> these are sort of jellyish bands and they're quite difficult to work with They're not a rainbow loom brand, I don't believe. And they're not as thick as the rainbow loom ones. But they, they have quite a pretty effect. So we move down four here. So we'll do four this side. And then down the centre, I 
Now you can pretty these up any way you like really I mean how you design the colors is is completely up to you I just noticed on this one my first three are actually white and I've done them as pink here um, I am going to put white across here and across here but if you do want it to look exactly like this one you would make these first three pink bands white so now we're going to do skin tone for her legs For her shoes, I'm going to grab two of the sparkly pink, wrap it around my hook twice and slide that onto two sparkly pink. Take another two sparkly pink, oops that was three, wrap it once and twice and we're sliding that onto two skin tone. Now we're going to take this first one of sparkly pink and we're going to move the two closest to the end of the hook off the hook onto the two flesh tone bands. Let's do the same on the other side. So swap sides and then move those up and over. And then we need to reclaim the end of our flesh tone bands. And point the foot this way and it goes on the end of the leg just there. We'll do the same for the other foot. Two sparkly pinks, wrap once and twice and slide on to two sparkly pinks and reclaim the end of your band. Then two sparkly pinks, wrap once and twice and slide on to two skin tone. Slide these ones onto the skin tone and then swap sides with the skin tone like that and move those on. Reclaim your flesh tone and point the shoe this way and attach to the end of the leg. So we've got her little feet. Let's give her some arms. I'm going to take a single skin tone, wrap it around my hook once and twice and slide it onto a double skin tone. Now I'm going to use my lighter pink for this. Slide it onto two of the lighter sparkly pink. Another two. And normally we have five pair for the arm, so this is one, two, three. Four, and now if you wanted to mix and match it up a bit you could do a pair of white here so that it matches in to her collar like that if you wanted to so why don't we try and see how that looks and I'll do the same on the other side a single wrap it once twice three times slide it onto a double of skin tone because these are her fingers and her hand and then we do three pair of the light sparkly pink so that's one pair that's two pair and this is three pair and then we'll do our pair of white. Okay, 
and we'll pop that here on this shoulder. We need to do some crossover bands. So I'm going to do a single sparkly and we'll put it from here oops, to here in a triangle. I'm not looping it on itself, it's just standard. The next single is going to be twisted into a figure eight, looped on itself, and it will go over these three pegs here in the shape of a triangle. And the same for the one below it. Figure eight, loop it on itself. And the same for this one. Single band, figure eight, loop it on itself, and it will go here. But we're going to put a flesh tone one here. Oops. If I can get that one out. And this flesh tone one is not going to be looped, it's just going to be a single band spread across those three. But we're going to take this part and flip it up over that bottom peg there. We need to do her long hair. You can see she's got long hair. So I'm going to take a single blonde band, wrap it once and twice. And I'm going to do about eight pair of these. So this is my first pair. One. you're putting it on the end of your hook and you're sliding those bands over onto it and this is how you do a chain on your hook four five six Seven, and eight. Now, these bands here on the hook at the moment will go where her eyes are, on the same peg. And then we're going to miss this next loop and go down to the second one here. So it's actually the third from the top. And that will go on her jaw area there. And these will just stick out. So we'll do the same for the other side. Take a single band, wrap it once and twice. And we'll slide that onto a pair. And that is our first pair of eight. So let's do another seven. So that's one. This is two. Three. Seven and eight. And again, we're going to put these ones where her eyes are, and then go to miss this next loop and go down to this loop here. All right, and that goes where her jaw is. Okay, so we are ready to start looming up. Pull down her foot, grab the two bottom bands, and we loom up. Same on the other side. Push back those crossover bands with the back of your hook. Get them out the way so that you can see the two bottom bands that you need to loom up. Oh, broken band. So let's deal with that. I do hate broken bands. Okay, so we need to fix the broken band. I'm going to take this top one off 
I'm going to release that crossover band I'm going to put that one back place this one here and I'm going to dig down and grab everything <laughs> That wasn't very elegant of me, was it? Right, that that bottom one is in place. Let's dig down through here. Oh, I do hate jelly pans. They're so difficult for an old trout like me to see. <laughs> and I've got it, and I'm going to link it straight up. And then we'll find its buddy. There we go. Now I need to put this crossover band back where it's supposed to belong. Crossover band, and then put my two loops back. There we go. Okay, so we're going to loom up the arms. Like that. And this side. Make sure you've got room. Push these down if you need to. Now we're going to go the side. So take the top two and loom across. And then the next two and loom across. We're going to go under here and catch those two skin tone bands and loom across. Two skin tone bands and loom across and then the chest band and loom up. So our arms are in the right position. We have three skin tone bands for the neck. Loom up. Now we're going to loom these sides of the face to the corresponding side. Push these down, they're a bit tricky otherwise. This one goes to the right. This one goes up. We're going to take our blonde hair off the loom for a second and keep it on our hook and take it off and hold it out to the side with your fingers. Dig down, find the two skin tone bands and loom up. Now we're going to put these back on our hook and back on that spot and find the two hair coloured bands and loom up. So we now have our hair locked into place. We'll do the same this side. Take the hair bands off our loom onto the hook. Hold them out with your fingers. Grab the two flesh tone bands and loom up. That's tight, hang on a second. There we go. Put your hair back on your hook and we will put that back onto the peg opposite the eye. Now we need to dig down and find the two hair coloured bands and loom up. Loom the centre of our face up. And the sides of the hair. And then let's grab two bands to tie off the hair with. Push your hook down the center peg and out the side. Grab the two bands and twist your hook so the back side of it goes against those bands and doesn't snag any. Pull your bands to the back side of that peg and reclaim them. You're going to take the two closest to you up, over and off and pull tight into a slip knot. We're ready to take her off our loom. I use a hook to help me ease her off. Already had one broken band, I don't want any more. <laughs> so I'll ease her off our loom.
out of the way. I'm just going to stretch her into shape a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to hide these bands at the back of her head under some existing bands at the back of her head so that they're not so obvious like that. You can tie them off with a clip or whatever you really choose to do. I'm quite secure the fact that they've got a slip knot on them. I, I don't think they're going to go anywhere. So I'm going to place her to one side and we're going to now concentrate on her skirt. So to start with I'm going to do a layer of the sparky, sparky, sparkly, <laughs> sparkly pink. So taking a single band, place it on one side, twist it into a figure eight and put it on the other side. Figure eight. And this is the only one that you have to do the figure eight for. And this is going to be layer number one. Push it down, make sure it's all pushed down. Now I'm moving to the glitter pink. Oops. And all you do for these next layers is place them over the loom like this. No twisting, you just place it from one peg to the next and you keep count of how many layers, like this is our second layer, push it all down and we do a third layer Okay, so that is three. What we're going to do, make sure everything is pushed down because they really do come off these pegs quite easily. Taking a hook, you're going to dig your hook down and grab the first two bands, okay, which in, in this case is easy because it's the sparkly pink, and loom them up. Two bottom bands, loom up. And you do that all the way around. Just the two bottom bands. Sorry. Push everything down and we're going to do layer number four. Again, just place them around the monster tail. Now, if you don't have a monster tail, I do have a tutorial on how to do this on your regular loom. You just do these colours on the regular loom. I think the regular loom one is actually showing how to do Cinderella's skirt, but all it is is a different colours set. So just do these colours. Now also I keep an I a tally on how you know what what row I'm on. Take the bottom two and lift them up, over and off and just keep pushing down because if you don't things will fall off. And I do quite like the rainbow loom hook for this particular project because it's got quite a deep hook
So when you take these two bottom ones off, you should be left with four bands on your each on each peg. So that was four. Let's do row number five. As I said, we need sixteen. This is number five, bottom two, loom them up. Make sure you push everything down and do another row. This is number six. So we have 10 more to do. I'm going to pause the video and I will catch you back when we're both at column number row number 16. So I've just loomed up row number 16, layer number 16, and I have four of each band on my peg now. And as you can see, I changed color. I've done the last five as the glittery pink. It doesn't matter if you haven't, whatever. Um, you can do them whatever colour you like. I'm going to take the bottom two and lift off. Take the bottom two and lift off so that you are left... Sorry, that's my back door going open and closed. Uh, so you are left with two bands on each peg. So I'm moving the bottom two up and over so that I'm just left with two bands on each peg. Now we're going to use a hook and we're going to collect all of these up. So put your hook down each and we will move all of these bands onto our hook. like so. Now grabbing two bands we're going to tie these together so put them like a subset move one into the other like that. We're going to put this on the end of our hook and we're going to slide these bands over and onto these two bands. So gently ease the bands off your hook and onto these two bands. 
slide them through and we're going to reconnect reclaim that other end of the band there pull it through so that you have the beginnings of a slip knot what we're going to do is tie this in a knot okay so tie that off into a knot like that so that you're left with a little loop there and it doesn't matter if you have sort of quite a big gap here that will be fixed <laughs> we will spoon it so grab your spoon what you're going to do is slide this onto your spoon and depending on the type of bands you've used it can be quite sort of tight or a bit tricky but it does stretch over there we go bit of brute force stretch these out so that they're not sort of on top of each other there we go now what we're going to do is grab our little princess and stuff her feet into the bed of the spoon and poke her down so that she's lying in the spoon like that then as we ease the spoon out and pull the dress off the spoon and these rainbow loom ones are quite tight there we go her little feet will pop out the bottom here like this and if they don't you can just curl the dress up to find it I have one that just got stuck up there so curl that back and there we have Aurora in her little dress now what we want to do if we want her to stand up obviously she's not going to stand up like that particularly well but if you stuff her feet up her dress just like that then she can just stand on the base of her dress quite happily so there we have Aurora thank you I hope you enjoy making her <laughs>